जीबीएस and they and they take the history on the basis of gbs and management started on the basis of gbs so uh, the purpose of this video and the question that is asked been asked by dr ismail is to broaden your uh, knowledge and broaden you, to brainstorm you people that there are lot of other things that can present like afp and similar to gbs that we should think of and we should uh, examine the patient and work up the patient according to these differentials so uh, if a patient presents with the acute flaccid paralysis the lesion is not only uh, can be at the peripheral nerves that is typical of gbs but the lesion can be localized at any uh, level of uh, nervous system the lesion can be at the brain stem the lesion can be at the spinal cord the lesion can be at the interior uh, horn where the motor neurons are lying the lesion can be again at the nerves and at the neuromuscular junction or even it can be the muscle so these all Uh, levels can uh, lean at these all levels can cause acute flaccid paralysis sir sure. uh, how do you differentiate what are the differentiating features of each lesion like if suppose there is a patient with uh, brain stem encephalitis there so is a patient with right i got your question uh, typically the lesions there are two diseases and uh, diseases that can cause uh, the acute flaccid paralysis uh, by affecting uh, the basically the brain stem area one is the brain stem encephalitis and second one is the brain stem stroke so uh, what are the differentiating features of these two diseases first is the brain stem encephalitis definitely every afp or acute flaccid paralysis case will have flaccidity will have low tone and will have decreased power but the differentiating feature in acute uh, in brain stem encephalitis is encephalopathy the patient will be encephalopathic patient will be disoriented patient will be having decrease gcs level that is a differentiating feature of the brain stem encephalitis and patient can have some other upper motor neuron signs like patient can have uh, besides having flaccidity and uh, reduced power can have upgoing planters uh, definitely in this uh, case we will go uh, we will we'll do the mri brain which will show the hyper intensities involving the brain stem area and definitely we will perform the csf which will show the pleocytosis so clinically clinically if you want to differentiate brain stem encephalitis from other causes of afp the answer is encephalopathy that will be marked in brain stem encephalitis the second uh, uh, condition that can in brain stem that can cause uh, acute flaccid paralysis is brain stem stroke so here the key point is the sudden onset of symptoms definitely the stroke is a, always a sudden event so if patient's weakness uh, is started suddenly it is of acute onset and uh, having the symptoms of brain stem dysfunction like dysarthria dysphagia uh, diplopia so that patient will be most likely having the brain stem stroke again neuroimaging will confirm this okay if uh, there is a lesion at the level of anterior horn cell before that okay. uh, we should discuss the cord okay at the level of cord if the lesion is at the level of spinal cord so at the level of spinal cord patient uh, definitely you know that uh, uh, spinal cord basically is consist of various bundle of tracks so at any level if there is a lesion the connection between the central nervous system it means brain and the muscles is been cut off and also the sensory information is uh, carried through these fiber to the brain so that is also cut off so what happens that uh, below the level of lesion you get the paralysis below the level of lesion you get the sensory involvement so neither the information is going from down to upward nor the information from the brain is reaching to the muscles so patient will have the weakness below the level of lesion and patient will have also uh, sensory issues in the form of numbness paresthesia below the level of lesion so typical point catch point for the spinal cord pathology is the sensory level so sensory if if patient is having sensory level you confidently can say that level of lesion is at the spinal cord the other features that favors that the lesion is a spinal cord includes uh, involvement of bowel and bladder involvement although they can also be seen in other pathologies like gps but be, seems to be rare in 10 to 20% cases but more common in case of uh, spinal cord involvement like in case of transverse myelitis so sensory level uh, bladder and bowel involvement back pain these are typical for the 
spinal cord uh, diseases. And most common diseases that can present with the acute facet paralysis are the trosophilitis and some type of uh, as well that causes the compressive myelopathy. And uh, there's a question about the lesion at interior horn cell that can cause acute facet paralysis. Again, the most common disease, uh, most not most common, but most famous disease is if, uh, polio. The polio virus typically affects the interior uh, horn cell. The differentiating feature of acute facet paralysis because of interior horn cell that are affected in polio is that patient usually present with asymmetrical weakness. One is the asymmetrical weakness. Second is no involvement of sensory symptoms because the motor neurons are affected only. So patient will have only motor symptoms. There will be no sensory symptoms. So asymmetrical weakness, no involvement of the sensory system uh, that is typical of a poliomyelitis. Uh, if there is lesion of the peripheral nerve, what will be the differentiating feature? So again, if the lesion is of peripheral nerve, now, the, in peripheral nerve, the, uh, the uh, patient will have flaccidity, hyperreflexia, hypertonia, and uh, you can have the uh, different uh, specific features, which depends upon the type of the underlying disease. For example, if patient is having GBS, so in that case, mostly the weakness is symmetrical and ascending. So patient will initially have the weakness involving the uh, legs and then in, uh, it will lead to progress to upper limb. So if symmetrical and ascending weakness is there, you think of GBS. Similarly, if it is a case of post-dipteric neuropathy, the weakness starts really from the bulbar and nasopharyngeal area. So patient will have initially uh, abnormal gag, patient will have a repeated choking episode, patient will have the change of voice, and then uh, this uh, weakness spreads, spreads downward. There are a few other causes of uh, peripheral nerves that can cause acute flaccid paralysis like, uh, like intermittent, uh, acute intermittent porphyria. In that case, you will have hypertension, hyponatremia, abdominal pain, and family history, and repeated episodes. Other diseases like uh, rabies can also cause acute flaccid paralysis, but in that case, you will have the history of uh, previous history of the dog bite. Similarly, uh, various uh, 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 drugs can also cause acute flaccid paralysis by affecting the peripheral nerves like uh, typically in uh, our setup we see the patients of, who are on the chemotherapy. Uh, similarly, uh, important is snake bite. Snake bite can also cause, present like acute flaccid paralysis if it is, a, uh, if it is the snake uh, venom is against the nervous system. Similarly, organophosphate poisoning patient can also present like AFP. In that case, patient will also have the other symptoms like uh, patient can have the respiratory symptoms in the form of bronchorrhea and chest involvement. So there are typical different features which vary from the etiology to etiology. Uh, if the lesion is at the level of neuromuscular junction, what will be the differentiating feature? Uh, at the neuromuscular junction, there are two important features that differentiate it. One is fatigability. That if you perform uh, a movement repetitively, if patients, if if patient is performing a movement repetitively, the patient exhausts. That is what we call as fatigability. And second is the diurnal variation. The patient uh, has the variation of symptom between morning and the evening. Uh, mostly, the tip, uh, the uh, signature disease is myasthenia gravis, in which patient when Wake, woke, when we, uh, awake, gets awake from the sleep, he is fine. There is no process. There are no uh, symptoms like uh, weakness in the any part of body. But as the day progresses, the symptoms start appearing and they gradually worsen over the time. So fatigability and diurnal variation are typical of neuromuscular junction. Okay. Uh, if the lesion is at the level of muscle? At the level of muscles, uh, different diseases can cause... Uh, uh, acute flaccid paralysis, like in case of inflammatory myopathy, like dermatomyositis, polymyositis, and viral myositis. In that case, you will typically have uh, the mus muscle tenderness and muscle pain. Similarly, hypokalemia itself can cause uh, flaccid paralysis. So in that case, you will have the history of uh, severe diarrhea and disease starts from the neck. Patient will have the, have the loss of neck holding at start. Usually in case of GPS or other causes of uh, acute flaccid paralysis, we don't see these symptoms. Similarly, in case of familial hypokalemic pedotic paralysis, you typically see these symptoms that weakness starts from the leg and patient will have the family history and patient will have the repeated episode of these symptoms. Okay. Thank you for watching the video.